Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, episode 8 in the Rails application. Today we're going to be ahead and looking at a couple of things. Uh, one is a new gem, and then the other is cores. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Boom. So the first thing to see is in the readme here I've updated, we're going to update our cores file. So cores is cross-origin resource sharing. And it allows us to accept AJAX requests from other domains. So we're going to be hosting the um, API at something like api.programmingtil.com. And then we want to resource or access it from some other URL, web, www or whatever the case may be. So we need to, within this application, allow different origins. And then we can say what the resources they have access to. The gem file is here, so we can click and look at that. Um, one thing to note is obviously you don't want to just allow any origin. So this right now allows any origin. Make this bigger because I forgot to do that. So what we want to do is we're going to lock this down. I'm not going to do that quite yet. Um, but what you can do is lock it down to make sure that you're only requesting from origins that you know you want to allow or make requests to your API. So that way you're not getting denial of service or, uh, well, it doesn't prevent that. It doesn't allow resources of yours being accessed from other people who if they're going to be running JavaScript or some other kind of thing to scrape all of your data via your APIs. This will allow you to lock it down. Um, so here's some examples here if you want to allow a local host um, or specific IP addresses. And then what resources they have access to. And you can have a lot of multiple blocks here too. So it's something uh, really, really nice to have. Um, it's something necessary. Otherwise, it won't work at all. So um, like I said, we're not going to leave this locked in like this. I will be updating it in a future episode. But this is just a quick way to get it up and going and so you can see what it is. The other thing that we're going to add is we've added this letter opener gem. So let's go ahead and open that real quick. And so all this does is it provides a way for you to access and get local emails delivered uh, into your temporary folder on your Rails application. So this allows you, and you can redefine it if you'd rather. So it's kind of nice. Um, I've already sent a few emails here. So I'm in my temp folder here and then a new folder called letter opener. So if you look in our temp folder, you'll see a letter opener here. And it's nice, and then you could see the date each email was sent. And I've clicked on it, and you can take a look. And this is what your email looks like. It you know, has your from, your reply. So it basically shows you what you're going to be working with and what the user would probably ultimately end up seeing. This is a great way to test emails in development mode without setting up an email provider. We will be doing that in a future episode, but for now, this is a great way to do things locally in development. So that's all I got for this episode. We're going to um, continue to dive back into the Svelte side of things and start testing some of this um, uh, configuration things that we've already added in terms of things like confirming your email and setting up a user. So that's it. Talk to you guys later. Subscribe and like, please. Thanks.